So <clears throat> yesterday we started off on the uh, Sutta 193 Sangha Rava. Yeah. So it's between the composition, uh, the composition between the Brahmin Sangha Rava and the uh, Buddha. So <clears throat> asking about uh, why some things, some of the hymns uh, are forgotten. Yeah, doesn't it doesn't recur in the mind, even those that is recited for a long time. And then there are some that is <clears throat> not recited for a long time, but would recur in the mind. Yeah. So then the Buddha um, explains that in the case where a person's mind is obsessed and oppressed by sensual lust, yeah, uh, then it uh, even those that is uh, recited for a long time will not arise, will not be cut. Whereas those that is not obsessed, not oppressed by sensual lust, the hymns that have been uh, even not recited for a long time will be cut. So the next few paragraphs are virtually identical, except the, the quality that is obsessed, that one is obsessed with, not so namely ill will. Uh, download, dullness and drowsiness, and then uh, restlessness and remorse, and lastly doubt. Uh, so five, which is basically the five hindrances. Uh, um, the the next few paragraphs would then be uh, the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. So if your mind is not obsessed, then you will uh, be able to <clears throat> recur. Oh, I'm going to just read one. Uh, uh, read the the parts because besides the the quality that is different, the analogy given is different. So I'm going to read to you the analogy. Is it okay? Of course, quite a bit of text. If I read through everything halfway through, you all will you know what will happen? You all will again when the when one dwells with a mind obsessed and oppressed by ill will. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, your filter off already. Huh? Mm. So for the second one, you will, the Buddha used a slightly different uh, metaphor analogy. Suppose there were a bowl of water being heated over a fire, bubbling and boiling. If, if a man with good, uh, good sight were to examine his own facial reflection in it, he will not see, uh, he will not know and see as it really is. So too, when one dwells with a mind obsessed and oppressed by ill will, yeah. So, so this is uh, the part that's this this thing. Now the earlier one, can you remember uh, the analogy given? Essential uh, last. So it is when a person, uh, if there's a bowl of water mixed with lac, turmeric, blue dye, or crimson dye, yeah. So all these are colored items. Yeah, colored items. You know what is turmeric? Uh, turmeric is the huangjiang, the yellow ginger. Yeah. So uh, that they use for dyeing and also for cooking. Yeah. Uh, used as a yellow dye. Yeah. When you eat curry, yeah, if you accidentally have curry like laksa or normal curries, if you wear white color or oh, very nice. Huh? Then you have polka dots, yellow color. <laughs> huh? Even some of the utensils, if it's porcelain, white color, you put curry inside and you let it stay for a while. After that, when you clean it, you wash it, remove all the oil, you see a yellow stain. <laughs> uh, turmeric is very powerful, it eats into the material. Yeah, so the earlier one was about colored substances that clogs the water. Suppose we clear water, but it clogs it. So an analogy for sensual lust. Then when you have sensual lust in your mind, then it becomes clouded. Yeah, you cannot see clearly. The second one is on ill will, and then it describes water. In this case, not with the colored dye, but heated up. So imagine if you if you have a pot of water and then you heat it up, what happens? It starts to boil, it starts to bubble, and when it bubble and boil. Then can you see the bottom clearly? 
not as clearly, yeah? not as clearly because the, that the, when the water is agitated, yeah, you cannot see clearly. There's a lot of movement and uh, the bubbles will block what is uh, actually inside. So similarly, when the mind is agitated, it's just like the water being agitated. Yeah? You cannot see clearly also. So if you cannot see clearly, then you cannot remember also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the third one is when the mind is obsessed by dullness and drowsiness. Suppose there were a bowl of water covered over with algae and water plants. If a man with good sight were to examine his own facial reflection in it, he would not know and see it as it really is. So too, when one deals with a mind obsessed and oppressed by dullness and drowsiness. So here, algae and water plants. Yeah. So we have a lot of things inside also, but now it's uh, algae and water plants. So again, it obstructs your vision, you know, obstructs your vision in a different way. Uh, all of us have been drowsy before. Yeah. All of us have. Uh, the other time, um, Danny, Danny asked about the, the feel like sinking down. Yeah. A bit of similar to the, this description here. Uh, here using downness. Yes, Danny. Uh, Danny then ah, uh, yeah. Oh, the last time you asked about sinking down, no? uh, has a bit of that meaning. Okay. So the fourth one is restlessness and remorse. In some translation, use they use uh, restlessness and worry. Yeah. You'll find that in different translations, sometimes the same translator, like, like Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi, in some other texts, may use a slightly different one because at different times. As we translate, we find that eh, certain terms are more uh, effective in explaining the concept. Yeah. So, um, dullness and drowsiness in some other texts translated as sloth and torpor. Uh, sloth and torpor. In Chinese, it's huen chen. Uh, uh, chen. <coughs> then the restlessness and worry, uh, or <laughs> you see, I always. Even though it's restlessness and remorse, I always say restlessness and worry. Because the first few texts that I read that talk about five hindrances translated as restlessness and worry. <laughs> yeah. So in the Chinese text is uh, Wu Zuo Diao Ju. Wu Zuo. <coughs> the Wu is the Ke Wu the Wu. Or <coughs> also read as E. Or there are two ways to read it. So it is that when you have done certain things, um, that is uh, not ideal, yeah? that you feel uh, regret over it. Yeah? So for example, you do good, you do bad, uh, both can cause you to become uh, regretful and then as a result, become restless. Oh. So the, the bad things is sort of easier to understand. So if you do something not so nice, but nobody knows. But when you meditate, you start to think about it. Yeah? Ayah, I did this thing. Ayah, will people find out? Ayah, I did this thing. Then uh, what if people ask me about it? <laughs> huh? yeah, maybe big, maybe small. It doesn't matter. Yeah? Then it, your mind cannot be settled. Yeah. So what about doing good? Hmm. Doing good can cause you to also become restless, <laughs> can become to start to worry also, you know? Yeah, why? Like for example, every day you, you wake up early in the morning and then join for meditation. Yeah, then, uh, but after sitting for a few months, you still you still don't seem to progress. You know, <laughs> huh? Maybe you progress, maybe you don't progress. But when you don't progress, then you start to you start to regret. You start to think. I, uh, I give up my precious sleep, uh, wake up in the morning, <laughs> come and you know, join in for meditation. But in the end, what do I get? I get dark eye rings, you know. <laughs> uh, before I get a ring around my head, <laughs> I get ring it around my eyes. Uh, you start to regret over it. Yeah. So then you become restless also. Yeah, you start to become restless. Yeah. Uh, usually in other classes, I would use the example of 
like you you do charity let's say you you are at a coffee shop or you are at a food court uh hawker center usually hawker center then somebody come over and then ask you whether you want to buy tissue so you buy the tissue then later on your friends or colleague got their food came over but they saw you buy the tissue they say ah you buy the tissue and then yeah i got got the tissue and auntie came over so how much do you buy oh uh one for one dollar Ayo, you cannot get to already la. The market rate is three for one dollar, you know. Uh, some more that auntie, you look at him, look at her, not really auntie, wa, quite young, wa, can work what? Wa. <laughs> then you start to wonder, you know. And then your friend or colleague, another one come over and then say, Ah, you buy ah. <laughs> all this syndicate, ah, contract one. Ah. Uh, they have a organization. Then some of them sell tissue but stay in condo one. Oh. Then you start to regret. Then you start to, ayah, I'm so stupid. <laughs> then when you meditate, ayah, why, uh, why did I spend that one dollar? <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. But don't, uh, if, you, if you want to do charity, you buy one dollar, even if you buy ten dollars, if you want to do it, do it happily, don't, don't go and, uh, yeah. That's why I like the Chinese saying, Xian xiao ren er hou jun zi. You know why it's Xian xiao ren hou jun zi? Yin uh, Toi, I explained to you. Okay, Edward, uh, uh, Edward, I explained to you. So, Xian xiao ren. Xiao ren means little person. <laughs> yeah. So, first be a little person. A hou jun zi. Jun zi means, uh, how to say jun zi? Like, uh, um, that means you are you're not a small person, you are a big person. So so basically like you are a gentleman or gentlewoman. <laughs> yeah. That means you are not so petty. The xiaoren means you are a petty person. Okay. Actually xiaoren means a lot of things, okay? But in this context it's more about being a petty person. So the Chinese saying, first be a petty person, then later on be a gentleman. What does it mean? That means if you want to, let's say, collaborate with someone or if you want to discuss certain things, be petty up front. Be petty up front. Tell people, you need this, you want people to do this, do that, do this, clearly. That means you draw the boundaries, you let people know what you really need from them. Be upfront about it, be clear about it, be petty about it, be calculative about it. But later on, when it's being done, be a gentleman. Yeah, be graceful about it. Maybe the person don't meet 100% of what you ask for, but maybe 99.99%. <laughs> SLA 99.99%. No better. <laughs> uh, then you say, okay, la, it's okay. Huh? Uh, you try your best. Yeah. Don't, right at the start, when people ask you, so what do you need from me? Uh, it's okay. La. Can I roughly, can I roughly, can. Then later when people do it, then you say, hey, how come this one like that? Hey, how come that one like that? <laughs> uh, But science people don't like that. Science, science people, uh, they, they prefer you to, to they prefer you to be xian jun zi, hou jun zi. Uh, they prefer you to be gentleman in front, then gentleman behind. So all the way gentleman. Don't 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 be petty. Uh, everything also can. Yeah. But when they want to collect money from you, everything cannot. Uh, so they want. Uh, they want this. They want you to be gentleman, they'll be the petty one. Uh, people are very funny. But anyway, side, side, side. So the last one, last one, let's take a look. Suppose there were a bowl of water that is cloudy, turbid, and muddy, placed in the dark. If a man with good sight were to examine his own facial reflection in it, he would not know and see it as it really is. So too, when one dwells with a mind obsessed and oppressed by doubt, and thus when one does not understand as it really is, the escape from arisen doubt, on that occasion one does not know and see it as it really is one's own good, the good for, of others and the good of both. Then even those hymns that have been recited over a long period do not recur to the mind, let alone those that have been so recited. Oh, so this is the last analogy 
which is um, if it's <coughs> cloudy, yeah, the water is cloudy, turbid, and muddy. So, uh, also not clear. Yeah, also not clear. Yeah, but in this case, this is probably like um, with with some sediments or maybe with some uh, other material. Yeah, and then place in the dark. <laughs> Huh? As though it's not bad enough that it's cloudy and muddy. So not clear water, muddy water. Okay, place in the dark. Can, cannot see anything. I cannot see anything. Hmm. So five hindrances. Oh. The next few paragraphs is the opposite. Oh, why the hymns are remembered. Yeah. Um, the, the analogy is basically the opposite. Yeah. Oh, but I will go through tomorrow. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope this can give you more um, what call it, clarity uh, because this sutta itself, you can actually find it and read the whole text yourself. Oh, uh, if I were to read through, uh, as I said, I think your the brain will just tong tong, <laughs> uh, lost connection. Yeah. At first five bar, then when I say for read, 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 then four bar, two bar, three bar, one bar, then <laughs> GPS signal loss. <laughs> okay, any questions? Anything? Uh, yes, Phyllis? So, uh, can I ask uh, uh, you, morning to you, uh, everyone. Uh, you gave an example for number four, restless and... Uh, restless and... Wait. Oh yeah, sorry. Hang on. Uh, uh, Alison... <laughs> Highlighted that I missed the four analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell story, tell story, explain the quality until I forgot. Okay, so number four, suppose there were a bowl of water that is clear, serene, and limpid, placed in the light. Uh, eh, sorry, this is the sorry, sorry, wrong. Suppose there were a bowl of water stirred by the wind, rippling, swirling, churned into wavelets. If a man with good sight were to examine his own facial reflection in it, he would not know and see it as it really is. Oh. So this one is for number four. <clears throat> the analogy is the water is being stirred by wind. Yeah? So rippling, swirling. Um, so I don't know whether uh, if, a, if the bowl, the bowl have to be fairly large. Oh. If it's too small, the wind, uh, what will happen uh, if the wind blow over a small bowl? Should be a uh, maybe about at least face size uh. If it's too small, you cannot see your face anyway, uh. <laughs> Correct. So it must be big enough for you to see your face. So if it's big enough, when there's strong wind, then it becomes choppy, uh. Yeah, a lot of small little wave, not big wave. Yeah, you cannot expect a small bowl. I mean, a bowl that is this size to have a tsunami. <laughs> uh, cannot. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so, but the surface is choppy. Yeah. Then you cannot see also. Yeah. Thanks for, <laughs> uh, thanks Alison for uh, highlighting. <clears throat> uh, the rest of you, did you, <laughs> did you catch that? <laughs> so, Rosan, we we don't jump off. Uh. Okay, Philly. So, is your question? So, so uh, recently there's a a, ch uh, a charity for children. So. Uh -huh. Well, uh, uh, make the donation, mm. but uh, then, then I receive an email from. Oh. Uh, I think it's related to uh, this what you call that this uh, organization. I think uh -huh. so. It prompted me to feel that oh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether is it a scam. So is am I something referring to number four? Um. I never regret, but it's just that. You know, I kind of worry that you know what is the implication when it comes to. So I'm not sure. Uh, is it referring to number four? Uh, seem to be similar, but because you you are very ambiguous about what the email is. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, know. yeah. So it is like they. they I, I I recall they they request some information. So from there, I kind of like worry. If now you receive, let's say, let's say, uh, let's say you you donate to, uh, Children's Cancer Foundation, okay, or something, and then 
after some time you, you see the news or you receive an email uh, from the Children's Cancer Foundation saying that in recent months there has been scam asking for donation. If you have done donation, uh, uh, please contact the police or uh, Children's Cancer Foundation for more information. You know, yeah, then you should be worried. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you let's say if let's say you donate to a certain organizations, <clears throat> they may <clears throat> sometimes follow up if you donate directly to the organization. Okay. Um, it is not uncommon for them to follow up and maybe sometimes ask you for certain information such as your <clears throat> your full name um, or or I think if you want to have tax rebate. Uh, not not tax rebate called the uh, tax exemption huh is it uh, right so in fact in some websites if you want to get tax exemption you select the tax exemption they will ask you to put in your ic your ic number immediately yeah something like that in some cases i think nowadays they will ask you to log in through singpass so that it's protected in both ways yeah so um, that's not uncommon this, uh, if you actually donate to a registered charity. Yeah. Uh, I actually donated overseas. <laughs> overseas? Uh, you, know, you, you know, when the YouTube came out, you know, like you can see a baby crying. Then <laughs> I... <laughs> so... Okay. You know, YouTube, you can find a lot of baby crying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay, anyway. But, but, um, uh, yeah, well, not to cast doubt on your charity, <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> uh, if you want to help in charity, uh, good to exercise prudence as well. Yeah, um, if you just see some YouTube and they provide a link, always 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 uh do some background check first yeah oh. uh so check on who is doing the collection and who is the recipient yeah these are two main things to check on um, there are many charities that don't do collection directly themselves they go through uh, a fundraiser yeah especially in us it's very common in singapore to some extent some Charities do that also. They go through uh, a professional fundraiser uh, company. So they actually do nothing but do fundraising. And they are, the, the organization actually get paid. <clears throat> yeah. So it's like they get a cut in a way. Yeah. So this is an uh, ongoing <laughs> uh, question mark of whether that is um, uh, the right thing to do. So the, the rationale is if charity organizations do their own fundraising, because they're not prof so professional, they don't know how to, they don't have that kind of reach, unless you suddenly get the government to organize one nationwide campaign, you know, then the whole country no end because it's, it's backed by, let's say, uh, uh, Comchess or backed by some big organization that you know is legit then you get you get a lot of coverage but otherwise one one small organization by themselves maybe they raise uh 30k a year but if they were to engage a, a fundraiser then they may even raise up to let's say 500k and then the company charge them 30k so you may be like, be like why i pay you 30k i might as well just raise that 30k myself but then the total amount raised will be much more and they can help the, the recipient, the actual recipient who really need the funds, right? So that's this, yeah. So don't be surprised. Let's say you are told that there's this charity that need help. But when you can click the link, it goes to a website that is not directly that organization, but it's a, a, like a generic one. But in Singapore, there's the Give Asia. Right, Give Asia uh, organization. There's a few organizations now in Singapore that help to do this kind of fundraising. It's almost like a 
uh, evolution of crowdfunding, except that is targeting um, charity, not for charity. So from what I recall, I think Give Asia, um, they are upfront with people. It's, they'll tell you that 10% goes into the admin and operating costs. Yeah. So um, uh, depending on which organization you donated to overseas, then I mean, you really donated. Uh, 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 but whether it's real or not, they should not be asking for more information than they need. Uh, if you're not asking for tax exemption, then all they need is your money. You don't need to give them anything. They ask you for your, for your bank account number. They ask you for your PIN number, password. None of that is required. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, um, short of letting me see the email. <laughs> yeah. I don't say that I'm, I'm able to do like 100% uh, assessment, but uh, I, I've seen enough email going around. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh. So, if you want, we can take it offline. You can let me take a look and then we can take it from there. Thank you, Sifo. Thank you. Any other questions? Sifo, mm -hmm. can, can I ask a question about karma? Uh, about karma? Karma, yeah. Okay. Um, if something bad happens to a, like a, a so-called good person or a very young child, uh -huh. is it um, usually due to karma from previous life? Hmm. And also, like, um, I'm just wondering for karma has action and results, right? So the 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 results can be felt like how many, I mean, how many lifetimes like it can, yeah, it can be felt how many lifetimes later. Because hmm. sometimes people say that you can see the result immediately, and sometimes people say you can see it in the next life, or but how, how long does does it last? The, I mean, the the results it oh. can be felt like how many lifetimes later. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, the first thing is, uh, there are two parts that you ask. One is, uh, sometimes bad things happen to children uh, or to good people. Also, I will split this into two categories. Uh, when bad things happen to children, um, so in, in uh, various teachings, then we say that, especially when, let's say, a child is born with certain uh, congenital defects, for example, yeah. Then in in various places, it talk about how this is a remnant uh, result of the karma, uh, uh, from past life, yeah. Because the baby, <laughs> baby in the womb cannot have done anything bad, ma, right? So in the Buddhist teaching, we say that this is due to remnant result from the past, yeah. But at the same time, there are some texts that talk about how a child's birth can be affected by the actions of the mother also. That means while we are pregnant, you go and do stupid things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in particular, if the, the things that you eat can also affect, and that is quite logical, right? Yeah. Uh, and so in modern times, we say, if you are pregnant, uh, avoid alcohol, avoid intoxicants, avoid cigarettes, because it affects the child. Yeah, if you uh, and in fact certain medication you have to avoid it as well, right? Because whatever you take, the, the child also you know <laughs> share with you, yeah. Uh, whatever goes into your blood bloodstream, your child will get it also. So that kind of makes sense, right? The tricky part is the the thing about uh, actions from the past, yeah. So karma, like the word karma itself, actually only refer to actions, yeah. But nowadays, when we say karma, karma, we tend to talk about the results more than the, the cause. Yeah? Action is the cause, and then results the fruit is the fruit. Yeah? In Buddhism, there are, there are two terms for it. One is phala, one is vipaka. Now, vipaka means results. Phala is the fruit. Yeah? Both, in this case, refer to the result of karma. No? When the Buddha used analogy to describe it, then he will say, karma as a seed, then result as the fruit. Huh? Yeah, so then the question is, how about good people? Uh -huh. How about good people? Yeah. 
So there's there's many things about this. Huh? Yeah. In the case of good people, it can be due to past karma, but it can be due to karma in this life also. Karma, remember, karma is not some magical thing we did. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's just any action we do. So for example, uh, I've counseled some some uh, people uh, for their work. Uh, I'm I'm going for the uh, I'm first starting out with simpler things, so, so like work related conflict. So they tell me things like, um, like uh, don't seem to get recognition from the boss, you know, but at the same time that this this uh, devotee or student who come to me for work counseling would tell me that he is uh, he or she is someone who the one to claim credit. So when he do his work, he just do and then be done with it. Then I, ask, I would usually ask them like, so do you actually um, like keep people informed? He said, no, I don't do such things. Not like some of my colleagues. Huh? Do one thing, huh? well, email the whole world. Huh? Tell everybody, well, I did this, I did that. What, what, what? I want to claim credit. Then I'm like, that's not claiming credit. That's called closing the loop. <laughs> That's about doing due diligence. You know, this that's about keeping people posted, updating people about the progress. That is a best practice. <laughs> yeah. So if you ask me, in such a scenario, the fact that this person don't seem to have good things happen to him or her at work is directly due to the person's present karma. You don't you don't let any anybody know what you are doing. Then of course your boss don't know don't know what good you are bring to the table. The fact that the boss don't fire you, you should be told to really. <laughs> the boss is like, you know, the boss cannot see the value. Then maybe out of compassion, the boss say, Ayah, okay, lah, just keep you around. <laughs> you know, anyway, you are doing some work. I don't know what work you are doing also, but anyway, yeah, just don't mess things up. Because if you don't so-called do the right karma that is required for people to know what you're doing, then of course the result is not good. But I, I, I know this is probably not the most severe bad things that can happen to people. right? But I start out with this to illustrate that not all bad things is due to past life karma. Okay? Yeah. Then how about things like, hey, how come this person get cancer? No? How come, how come this person have a have a husband or a wife who is so mean? Why he or she is so nice? You know? Yeah. So some of this would pertain to some form of past life karma. In some cases, it's still present life karma. Why do I keep highlighting present life karma? And I I usually don't focus so much on past life karma, not because I don't think it's due to past life karma, but because Past life karma already done. You cannot undo it. You know? Even present life karma, whatever has been done, cannot undo already. What you can do is your present, present karma. Yeah. But one may then argue, in the case of, let's say, a, a nasty spouse, no matter how I, I do, the person still, you know, like this, like that. Then what's the point? Why must I always be the one to try to work things out? So my, my thoughts about this is, yes, I don't say that when you change yourself, everything will go well. Okay? You must know. Huh? Just because you change yourself doesn't mean things, things will definitely go well. Doesn't mean the other person will then change. <clears throat> Many times it doesn't, right? Then why bother? The trouble is people don't even try. Then they just say, ah, yeah, the person won't change. Or just try for three days, then after that, the person don't change, then oh, I'll get it. You like that, I also like that. I can one. We, we continue to fight, oh, see who will live longer. Oh. <laughs> right? And it kind of makes sense, right? Why, 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 why bother? Now, this, is, this is why. Because if you change yourself and the person still continue, then you know for a fact that the person is being a jerk. Then you, then you don't have to have any qualms about ending the relationship. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I mean, it makes sense, right? And if at that point in time, you still don't want to end, then it's your problem. It's not that person's problem anymore. <laughs> right? That is your choice. Then you must know that, to put it bluntly, suck it up. <laughs> right? You already change yourself. Yeah? And the person still don't change, and you still don't, you still want to continue, then Chinese have a saying, 一个愿打, 一个愿挨. Yeah? One person uh, willing to beat you, and you willing to bear with it. Then you happily bear with it. Lah. Every day wake up with a black eye, happily look at the mirror and, ha, ah, I'm so happy I get my results. <laughs> uh, oh, but not to make a joke about this, huh? especially family violence uh, or emotional, the kind of, not all violence is about physical. Lah. Yeah, emotional violence. So uh, day in day out, give you mental. You know, don't have to beat you. Yeah, beating you, at most you run away. At most, you know you. I mean, of course, if the person break your hand, then later, so if you see my hand, you 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 tell me that physical will go away. But you look at my hand, my now my hand like that. <laughs> of course, you know exceptions. But many times the 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 torture can be. Uh, even more severe when it's emotional, when it's mental. Yeah. Every day give you a black face. Yeah. Every day you come back, slam the door, don't talk to you. You talk to the person nicely, the person, especially if your if it's your spouse, yeah, or family members, yeah. Your children, you come back home, you buy things for them, then they, they give you a face. Ah, uh, put that. Uh, why you always buy this? I don't like. Uh, <laughs> you know, I owe you one. <laughs> then you got to ask yourself. You don't owe, then don't buy law. You don't think you owe the person, then you don't buy law. <laughs> I I'm 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 really like that. Uh. I I I have almost zero tolerance for for this kind of thing. Yeah. We do our due um well diligence, if you will, to try to improve things. But if the person of course you cannot just say try three days, try at least three months, uh, three months, <laughs> six months, <laughs> you know. And and don't just try without saying anything. After trying for three months, if the person is still unamendable, then you just check yourself and say, okay, is there anything else? Then you sit down with the person, ask the person, hey, I, I, I've been trying this thing, you know, because we've been married for a while. And like, I don't know, is, 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 uh, is it like, is it not working, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but you don't seem to be happy at all. Yeah. The point of getting married is to be happy, right? So what, what are you not happy with, with about? Yeah. And I, I, I thought maybe these five things are the things I should change. I, imp I work on it. I don't say I, get, I do it 100%, but at least I maybe at least do it 70%, sometimes 80%. But you don't seem to have any change. It, is there something that I can do? And at least you give the person a chance to voice out, yeah? So, again, we come back to the, ayah, sifu, no point telling the person one. I tell her, then yeah, yeah, yeah. still like that one. Yes, at least after that, you talk to the person, the person don't give you a clear answer or what, then you, after that, you, you turn up one day and give the person, okay, this is the letter. <laughs> uh, you are terminated. <laughs> The person cannot be like surprised. Hey, why you ask for divorce? Uh, why why is that a surprise? Remember six months ago, I started changing myself. Then three months ago, I talked to you. You don't want to talk about it, and you tell me that ah uh, no point one now. Then you see no point what? Then I continue trying for three more months. You're still like that. So this is the letter. Uh, you know the trouble is a lot of people they don't do this. They bottle up. Then they change a bit. <laughs> then suddenly. Well, even <laughs> guy or girl, same. So, yeah, so this is another category. Okay, but at least to me, uh, with a spouse, with a relationship, at least there's someone you can work with. Uh. If you get cancer, how to talk to a cancer? <laughs> you know? Yeah. At most, you go and see the doctor, the oncologist, the oncologist come out with a cocktail for you to, to take, and then. 
cancer you cannot i mean okay la, i i heard of some people who say oh talk to your cancer cells yeah uh, read it loving kindness to it i, I don't know how 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 that works ah huh? <laughs> in the sutta so some people say oh this is an application of buddhism i i don't know you know yeah i hope it works for you but i don't know whether this is the way is described in the dharma yeah but in any case if let's say my, my point is like if you you know for some reason you know you get cancer yeah yeah or got get, get brain tumor yeah then you ask yourself okay then why is it like that and this is the number one question whenever i'm asked to counsel cancer patients yeah the, the question of why now, why am i getting this there are many ways to look at this one is if i if you can find a master who can meditate and then look at the cause and effect then it can tell you okay unfortunately this monk cannot <laughs> yeah but a question that i asked a student there was a student uh, in his, I think, late 50s. Yeah. So he, uh, during class, he, he mentioned about his, his frustration with his physical uh, well being or unwell being there, thereof. And so one day during class, I asked, he, he mentioned, he brought it up again and I asked him, I said, uh, How was your health all your life? So he said, Well, for the most part, okay you know the usual once in a while have a flu have a bit of headache but other than that his health is pretty good so i said i asked him so when did your like deterioration of health happen how recent he said past two years so i asked him i said this is the problem with us you know for 50 over years your health has been good you don't ask why your health is good we take for granted our health has to be good <laughs> you know but now, to, for just for two years, your health a bit like this. Uh, yeah, uh, then you, why are uh, why are? Uh? <laughs> and I told the, the class, I said, this reminds me of the two thousand eight Leman brother that meltdown. Do you remember? It affected the whole world, right? And then in Singapore, a lot of un uncle auntie who go and do investment got burned, right? Then the 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 uh, the, the papers interviewed them and then they're like i i don't know why leh. Oh, i don't know how how come like that one leh. then you know the first thought that come to mind i know this is not politically correct to say you know people you know auntie uncle then they they get burned then wow you have no compassion as food my question is not not whether i have compassion why they are so greedy or what my question is before you get burned Nobody forced you to invest, right? Number one. Number two, more, even more importantly, when you get paid out, when your the stock go up and you are winning money, how come you don't ask why? Hey, why ah? Uh, why ah? Uh? <laughs> how come uh, you never call your broker? Hey, why? Hey, how come? How come I got a message saying that I, uh, the value just went up? How come go up ah? Uh? Why ah? Uh? <laughs> we never ask one. <laughs> When things go, go back, then we ask why. When things go well, we never ask why. When you buy 4D and you win 4D, do you ever ask, why? Ah? What, what merit have I done? What karma did I do? Why did I win 4D? We never ask why. But when we don't win, we always don't win, then we ask, how come my life is like the one? My life is always shall not one no. <laughs> yeah? When you get your pay every month, you don't ask why. Why you get your pay? But so I work what? You sure you work? <laughs> a lot of people also work, no? But halfway through the company collapse, they also don't get their pay, you know? You think you, you must get your pay just because you work. Uh? <clears throat> Especially in this one and a half years, a lot of people also work. Uh? <laughs> Go halfway the company broke. It's a lot. <laughs> just because you work doesn't mean you will get your pay, you know? But when we get our pay, we don't ask why. Yeah, when we don't get bonus, we ask, how come uh, my bonus not as high? <laughs> And this is the trouble yeah but not to trivialize a person having bad things happen to them yeah i just want to highlight that our disparity our incongruency in how we face things 
when it's something pleasant we don't don't ask why when it's unpleasant then we ask why that's why it seems so so magical so strange why it happened but actually our life itself is full of things that don't make sense why did we wake up this morning you think you're supposed to wake up a lot of people don't wake up you know <laughs> how come we wake up it so happened that our life force haven't end <laughs> no no cockroach climb into our mouth <laughs> We didn't choke on our saliva. For us to stay alive, it requires a lot of more conditions, you know, for us. For us to die, just one or two conditions, probably you die already, you know. But we never ask why. Still, I don't say it's easy for people to face it when bad things happen. No? Yeah, but if we were to examine our life in totality, then we may realize that it is a, a blessing that we are alive. Yeah. But in Buddhism, we don't say blessing from Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or some higher being bless you to be alive. Yeah. Uh, results of past karma. Yeah. Or plus present life karma. Yeah. If you if you if you live in a way that is not supportive of life, sooner or later you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Buddhism, when Buddha talks about karma, is not all about past life karma. Majority, the ma majority of the Buddha's focus on karma is actually about present life karma. But most people end up thinking about past life karma. Because present life karma is the only karma that you can influence, that you can do differently. Yeah? So karma is... Should, the focus should be on the active form. Yeah? Because this teaching is about causality, cause and effect. You do such cause, you get such results. Oh, yeah. As to the specifics, this particular person like this, like that, uh, we, uh, usually when students come to talk to me, um, I, will, I will listen to them and then I'll ask them some questions. Um, and I would oftentimes give them this this um, analysis and ask them if there's anything that they can change for the present life yeah if all things are already done but things still don't change then i will say if you want me to chant for you <laughs> uh, and maybe you should also do some chanting do some repentance that's usually not my first option which come across strange for some people. Then, if you are monk, first option you should be doing chanting. Why do you ask so much question for what? Because a lot of our problems cannot be solved with chanting. I, I dare say this and put it online. Uh, a lot of our problems cannot be solved by chanting. If everything can be solved by chanting, Buddha don't have to teach four noble truths. The Buddha don't have to tell us about our defilements. Just chant more. <laughs> huh? Come, Sariputta, start doing chanting. Huh? You don't have to meditate. <laughs> yeah. When he met Kisa Gotami, who lost her, her son, and then she went a bit crazy, the Buddha never said, Aya, you lost a son, go and chant, huh? chant for your son to be reborn in pure land. But instead, the Buddha asked him, asked, told her, Yeah, I can help you. Kisa Gotami went crazy, you know, lost a son, and then tried to find people to revive the son. Carry the dead son, walk around looking for a solution, you know. The Buddha's solution, very interestingly, was not tell her, uh, you and sign up, go Alaya, sign up for the three-year course of uh, three-year halfway through commit suicide earlier. <laughs> the Buddha tell her, yeah, can be solved. Yeah, but, but how can the Buddha tell such a lie? But the Buddha didn't lie. Buddha qualified it. Buddha say. I can help you bring your son back to life by uh, having five mustard seeds. You can get five mustard seeds from, uh, from some family. So she was like, wow, excited. Whoa, finally someone told me there's a cure. So what about the goal of them? But I say, but it must be from a family that has not experienced any death before. Now, we, we are now in a clear state. And because we know the story, we know that that is that's just, just another way of telling her it cannot be done. Right? Because is there a family that has not experienced that? No. 
yeah no such a family exists but in that that state she, it gave her something to work on so she went family to family at the end of the day she realized no family that she can find everybody experienced that and because every family that she asked the mustard seed from with that requirement everybody tell her no la everybody experienced one she just need to hear it often enough for it to sink in yeah, for it to sink in yeah. so maybe sometimes we need good friends around us to tell us you know yeah the right message that there are things that bad things happen maybe you have to come to terms with it there are certain things that is bad that is because of what we are doing now that we can change and then there are things that perhaps you don't have to continue to bear with it you should move on you know yeah I hope that uh, clarifies for you, Leah. Yes, thank you so much. So, uh, okay, just one or two points. Uh, uh, why do I cry almost every time I do meditation? Many similar case studies elsewhere. Uh, I have, I have, uh, uh, I know there are some people they would start to be teary or cry when they do chanting or they visit some temples they just see the Buddha image they just start to tear not because of any particular set um, incidences yeah or in the, in the in some cases when they meditate they cry yeah uh, I recall that uh, someone asked my teacher before, my late ordination teacher. So he explained that sometimes it could be a trigger of a wholesome karmic link. Yeah. Well, as to what? That I don't know. Huh? So it could be that. Or it could be that. Yeah. Uh, so the important thing is what we do as a result. Yeah. Uh, whether we start to cry when we meditate or for any other matter, take the opportunity to observe your emotions. Linking back to the earlier question about karma, whether it happened like this or like that, the important thing is what we do as a result. That is the most important karma. <clears throat> Trigger what? So, as in trigger the crying lah. Yeah, we're talking about the crying lah. Yeah, whatever may, may be the case that trigger our crying, to me that's another thing. Yeah, but what's more important is what we do as a result. If as a result of crying, then you get all emotional and then you break down. Ah, then then it's not helpful. It's like people asking me, Sifu, I dream of this, I dream of that. I see Buddha in my dream." Uh, I go to a temple and then I see a dragon fly around. Okay, sure. Last time I was like, sure not. <laughs> can you give me evidence? But if it's a dream, cannot give evidence. Right? If the person saw then before you take out a handphone, cannot the, the dragon disappear? How? The dragon is shy, always appear when nobody can see, uh, can take pictures then how? Yeah. So nowadays, I, I ask people, instead of questioning whether they saw what they saw, I ask them, so what does that do for you? Yeah. Does it then encourage you to be more wholesome, to do more practices? Yeah. If it does, then that's good. If it doesn't, then what's the point? Oh, I'm in trouble. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Tu Fan Nao. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Tu Fan Nao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Bu Yuan Zhi Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. 不愿追涨西消除。世事常行菩萨道。世事常行菩萨道。阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Till we meet again, may be guided and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Sa to sa to sa. And as always, likewise, <coughs> have a, have a, have a,
and the Shenfu day ahead. <laughs> Take care, stay safe, stay dry. It's raining now. Yeah.